friends. Uh, for now, um, I'm glad to present, uh, to talk about some preliminary results of our long-term work on uh, making the database and WebGIS solution for archaeological mm -hmm. sites of mostly Russia, but also Eastern Europe and uh, worldwide, uh, and also worldwide system. Uh, so, uh, for the beginning, uh, some issues about uh, archaeological databases and web solutions. Uh, mm, uh, there are, uh, we know, uh, all of us know that there are different types of databases which are available online and which are more or less related to archaeological data. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have uh, a kind of stuff like archaeological sites databases, uh, which are more or less uh, national uh, type of uh, uh, of uh, web um, uh, uh, sites and web databases, but also we have other types of uh, um, uh, online uh, um, online solutions like uh, radiocarbon databases, paleo environmental databases, and uh, different types of uh, databases of heritage sites. Uh, all of these types of databases are uh, limited in their uh, in their field of uh, interests and field of uh, data. Uh, for example, uh, the first problem uh, for archaeological sites databases is the uh, limited access for public and limited access for even professional uh, uh, professional groups because most of, uh, most of them are uh, national oriented and oriented to the national uh, interests. Uh, uh, in archaeology. Radio Kerman database are worldwide, but they have only a limited part of information uh, about the archaeological context, about archaeological metadata, and so on. Uh, PLA environmental databases, they, yeah, they are very useful, but they have no archaeological data. And heritage sites is a very strange thing, and even more national oriented yet. Uh, uh, archaeological databases itself. So uh, this uh, uh, this state of art is uh, uh, even more uh, uh, is a big issue for such a huge country as Russia is, and for the archaeological sites so they are in the archaeological knowledge of uh, 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 Russian um, territory. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is why we decided to make some, uh, some stuff, some solutions for uh, this uh, kind of problem. So, uh, a huge territory which is uh, mostly uh, uh, where the data on archaeological sites uh, is hidden mostly in um, uh, papers uh, spread over billions of articles, uh, uh, volumes of archaeological maps and other paperwork. Uh, uh, so uh, one can't use this data uh, uh, in the same place and to, uh, uh, each researcher tries to make his own database uh, with his own, uh, in his own field of interest and uh, of course uh, he usually fails because it's impossible to collect uh, such a huge amount of data. Uh, so uh, uh, the last attempt to make a uh, comprehensive archaeological database was made by uh, Russian Academy of Sciences Institute of Archaeology under the uh, supervising of uh, Dr. Makarov. And they made a very Viewed an expensive database, uh, which is uh, uh, saved uh, <laughs> under the Institute of Archaeology in the same computer, in the only one computer, and it is, has no any kind of public access. So we just we only know about there is something very big and rich data there, but we have no access to it. So uh, um, what is so uh, why? It's so difficult to, to make uh, kind of stuff for uh, archaeological database solutions because we have uh, different challenges that uh, uh, limit our uh, our attempts to make it. So first, 
the, uh, the most problem is how to collect the uh, most um, difficult issue is how to collect, uh, how to combine data with different level of accuracy, different le level of objectiveness, and di different levels of, you know, that all. <laughs> so we have works of 30s where uh, your sites are described like a being somewhere to three kilometers from a post hole on the back side of the yard of a village and so on. And at the same time, we have a pretty good data with centimeter accuracy that was collected by modern researchers in recent works. Uh, so, uh, also, we have a uh, big issue with uh, uh, different exclusive interpretations. Uh, so, uh, some guys uh, interpret this site as uh, um, belonging to, I don't know, uh, linear pottery culture. Other guys uh, uh, are disagreed with it, so they uh, don't even uh, trust in linear pottery, for example, at all. So, what should we do with this? How, uh, how should we combine these uh, this different, completely different uh, types of data? They are exclusive, they are sharing, they are uh, erding it, each other, right? Uh, uh, other thing, what should we do with multi-layered, so called in Russian it would be multi-layered, but uh, you know, that sites, that sandwich type sites, when in the same uh, in the same area you have a lot of layers, uh, a lot of contexts, and you have to build Harris matrix for each part of this site. What what should you do with this, uh, with this type of uh, of data, and yes, what <laughs> what should you do with destroyed sites? Uh, sites. So when uh, you have an, an evidence and published evidence of uh, of sites somewhere, for example, in our region, in Middle Volga region, covered by water of reservoir, yes, totally flooded by reservoir. Yes, we know that there was a site there, but uh, uh, how could we manage it together with the existing sites? What should we do in this case? So, uh, hearing all these issues, we tried to to uh, make a kind of uh, solution for all of them, and to uh, to present you uh, um, some results of uh, how we think it, uh, they could be solved. These problems could be solved. Uh, so, first, the logical uh, logical structure of data uh, uh, to our minds. Uh, would be um, as follow. So uh, we um, made several levels of data uh, from the single uh, single uh, finds, yes, single small finds, and uh, which are uh, ecofacts and artifacts, or artifacts, ecofacts, yeah, right, like, like that, and uh, radiocarbon samples, and uh, put them into different. Uh, different types of contexts. Uh, the smaller of them is a, an assemblage. Uh, so this is a set of fish, uh, set of things covered by, at the same time, archaeological, uh, archaeology, uh, <laughs> so uh, 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 originated with the same proven uh, provenience, originated from the same complex, same feature. Then uh, to the uh, number of features which could be named a con a context or archaeological layer, then to archaeological site which is a, a, a set of a number of archaeological layers, uh, and this archaeological site uh, doesn't um, uh, uh, coincide exactly with the heritage site because it, it could differ in some parts. So. Uh, heritage site could be smaller or bigger than archaeology than a uh, pack of archaeological layers themselves. Uh, so also you have excavations which cut uh, all uh, all of your pack of layers, and uh, also you have different interpretations made by different authors for each kind of information except for this uh, more or less objective data, uh, like radiocarbon data. Uh, so, in this case, we have a very diversified uh, and low-structured system of different types of information, uh, different kinds of information like paperwork, uh, coordinates, spatial reference, 
uh, 3D models and all of that uh, stuff. Uh, so we decided that the best solution for uh, um, for dealing with this uh, kind of data would be a graph database, not the SQL database, but the graph one, uh, which is uh, and we use Neo4j. Uh, 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 data management, uh, management system for making our uh, database. Uh, uh, which is important, what is important here in this structure? Using red databases, you can make a lot of different uh, relationships, uh, uh, re different relations between, uh, uh, between uh, different uh, types of data. So, for example, the same uh, the same object could have different interpretations made by different researchers and even by the same researcher but in different years in different articles or uh, other type of uh, published data for example and this interpretation could be uh, uh, could be related to the same object at the same time without any errors between them so uh, this structure provides us with possibility to uh, uh, to combine all the all these uh, you know humanitarian way of thinking uh, about the world, about a humanitarian way of uh, understanding reality, uh, like here. So, uh, and uh, uh, it provides us with possibility to manage all these data, all these interpretations. So I have not a lot of time, I think, yeah. Uh, uh, to uh, another issue is how to, okay, we uh, made a database, uh, but the, another issue was how to manage, how, how to make an interaction between user and this uh, complicated database. Uh, for this uh, interaction between client and server, uh, we used uh, GraphQL, uh, 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 release GraphQL uh, decision, uh, which makes possible to make uh, deep queries uh, uh, reflecting this low structured graph database, uh, 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 which I shown uh, I, I have show, I shown uh, earlier. So uh, uh, we made our own uh, library. Uh, to uh, to work with uh, uh, graph structure of database, it um, and uh, combined it with a, a multi uh, multi user uh, uh, principle of the uh, of this database based work. So we organized all our data as a social professional social network of different researchers, which uh, uh, each uh, of whom provides his own interpretation, his own data, uh, and inputting his own data, with, uh, 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 providing his own opinion, his own interpretation to this data. Uh, okay, uh, all this, uh, all this multi-user, um, uh, multi-user uh, 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 participant structure of uh, uh, a web uh, database, uh, is divided into four levels from uh, administrator who uh, have most part of the rights or of the uh, access to the data to visitors who are only able to uh, to take published data. So the basic level is uh, here. Uh, researchers could share their information or could uh, um, uh, uh, make it private uh, to work uh, with it themselves without any public access. Uh, functionality of our system is based on this principle. So you can uh, import and manage, uh, manage data, store it, uh, and uh, display, select, and analyze uh, all the stuff which is uh, inputted uh, in the database. Uh, we also put some data there, uh, mostly uh, archaeological sites of Middle Volga region, uh, but not only this, uh, uh, this is a, a heat map of our data, uh, our data in the database, and several examples. So these are, for example, a selection of sites, selection of investigations, and the numbers of different types of data is here. 
so, uh, a few words about uh, each part of uh, the uh, functions of the system. Storage. You can store uh, full text articles and full text reports. Like here is a report, here is an article. Uh, uh, topo maps and also different different kind uh, of maps uh, in the database. Map service is based on several uh, different types of maps. Uh, here are uh, uh, web maps and satellite ma uh, satellite photos, old uh, archive maps, mostly of Russian Empire and uh, Soviet period. Uh, they work uh, mostly on Volga Volga River region, but uh, you can download. Uh, uh, all kind of maps here to, to make it. So we use Leaflet uh, library uh, to, to manage all this um, map stuff. Uh, and yes, and also you can down, uh, upload um, all of the plans for uh, off sites or uh, smaller regions in the database. Uh, uh, a comprehensive structure of spatial reference was based to uh, was uh, constructed to make possible to manage uh, data with different level of accuracy. Uh, so, if you have uh, data for your artifacts, uh, uh, spatial reference for your artifacts or the C14 dates, so you can put them on the map, right? Otherwise, uh, they will take uh, coordinates from assemblages. If you have no coordinates for assemblages, you will take them from excavation block and so on. All the special uh, data inherited uh, from upper level to the lower level, uh, like here. So here are C14, here are excavations, and here is the uh, site, uh, which is the highest level of uh, our system. Uh, a comprehensive structure of uh, search and selection functions uh, in the database uh, were provided by using GraphQL with a deep, uh, with a several levels of uh, depth. Uh, uh, so uh, here is an example of interface of uh, advanced search. Um, and also uh, we already began to work with different analytical tools uh, which are proposed to be uh, included as a, a research of tools uh, uh, in our system. At the moment, we have a cluster analysis and uh, 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 PCA analysis and uh, several functions of combining C14 data for the assemblages or a selected area of size. So, for example, you can go to archaeological culture and build uh, co combine C14 data for the archaeological culture or the group of sites. Uh, otherwise, you can go to zooarchaeological data, which was just <laughs> just constructed, and make a cluster analysis, which is, for example, here to uh, to combine the sites according to their uh, uh, zooarchaeological evidence, uh, zooarchaeological uh, bone remains, and so on. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, at the moment, uh, the system is situated there around that uh, uh, address. Uh, I can also just show you that it is really exists. <laughs> it really exists. Here it is. It's not a myth. <laughs> it is not only a presentation. So, you can go, for example, to uh, some sites uh, which are the most uh, well investigated in middle Volga region, go to uh, different categories of data there in uh, middle Volga region, uh, um, uh, open some, oh no, sorry, uh, like that, uh, archaeological sites, it takes time, uh, depends on, uh, on internet connection. Uh, so here you have the archaeological sites in Bulgar area, in area of Bulgar, uh, our, uh, uh, fortified medieval settlement, which is a UNESCO site now. Then go to uh, uh, layers, uh, archaeological layers of uh, Bulgar uh, site. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, here, here are they. Uh, so uh, a lot of different stuff here. And uh, you can uh, look uh, through the archaeological layers 
and here are the uh, go to archaeological layer itself. Uh, uh, ah. So uh, yeah, there is a uh, inaccuracy of data here because uh, I I I don't know somehow I, I I'm not logged <laughs> logged in. Uh, okay. Uh, go to chronology, which was mentioned in the topic of the research. So get some absolute chronology based on radiocarbon data or go to chronological interpretations of this layer. Uh, uh, go to excavations. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, research. Uh, go to so one of the research. Go to source of this research, getting their full text report. Uh, like here uh, and so on. So you're welcome to register in our system and uh, maybe in, in a month uh, we'll finish our input interfaces, input data interfaces, so you can uh, upload your information stored there and manage with our tools. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention. Maybe uh, are there some questions to me? Yes, thank you for the presentation.